Good evening, everyone. How is everybody? Welcome to the money date. Let's talk about renter's insurance today. I know for a fact that there are a lot of you out there who don't think that renter's insurance is something worth investing in. So why don't we explore how that kind of policy, if you understood what it actually provides in terms of, terms of protection, can help you. So hop on, get yourself comfortable, take out a pen and a piece of paper and get ready to take some notes. Now, the song I'm playing in the background for just a little bit is um, from the old days. You know, I have to give credit to Yuri. Yuri is my husband, and so he is um, a, a music buff. I don't know if it's a, if a term, but I want to give him that. So he is, um, he's been always interested in music, and he plays guitar. Um, and anyway, so he creates these awesome playlists in Spotify, and I just, um, I just love doing, uh, love following his playlist because he comes up with these songs from the past, right? He somehow he remembers the name, somehow he remembers the artists, and so this is the song from, I think, late '80s, early '90s. This is way back when, so it kind of reminds me of my childhood, I should say. So anyway. Uh, welcome everybody. I want you to remember why we're here today and why do we get together for a money date. It's a funny name for a show, but it's meant to remind you that you've got to pause, you've got to reflect, and you've got to give yourself time to look at your finances. I was in meetings all day today, just like nonstop. Hi Lori, good to have you. Um, how's your new grandson? I can't wait to meet him next week. Um, so, um, the, the, the idea why you need to get here and give yourself time to look at your finances is because if you don't, somebody else will, okay? So let's put it this way. But you know, I want you to understand where, hi Lisa, good to have you. I want you to understand uh, where your uh, expenses are. All right, stay on the top of it. I want you to know what your income looks like. Oh, I know he's perfect. I cannot stop staring in pic at pictures. So uh, I'm very excited. So income, expenses, and savings goals. All the meetings I had today, I had five meetings with clients. It's been a crazy day. All those things is what, we, hi Misty, good to have you. Um, those are the things that I want them to be staying on the top and the same thing for you. Now, the reason for this is very simple. You need to have your foundation strong. That's it. There's nothing else. I talk about all these other topics and they're good to know. They're good financial tips, financial suggestions for you to implement. But we, when you don't have your foundation strong, it's, it's just not gonna work. So please, get out whatever tools that, that is that you need to remember and keep track of the expenses that you have, income that you make, and then stay on the top with your financial goals, okay? So that's the whole idea for the money date. Find the time, if today's not the time for you to do that, find another date. I started doing this on Sundays back in the day, now I switched doing it on Wednesdays. So there, that was just the time that worked for me. All right, now the second part of a money date, and I would love for you to share, and I know what Lori is gonna say, but by the way, I do love your glasses, Lori. I don't know if that was just uh, in the picture um, or you actually are wearing them, but I do need to get glasses. I have some, uh, some issues with, because I'm on a computer a lot, and so I need to have my uh, fonts larger and just like, uh, anyway. Uh, maybe not to discuss this on a money date, <laughs> but yours look cute, so that kind of reminded me, oh my gosh, could I wear glasses? I think I could. Um, or contacts. Yeah, oh, okay, good, good. So, um, all right, so let's talk about a positive, positive money moment, money-related moment over the last week, okay? So give yourself a chance to pause back and think about what did happen in the last seven days in your life, and you can go back a couple of weeks if you haven't done it in a while, that you think is, has been you know, significantly good, right? And you can actually remember it. Now, I suggest doing something like this every day. We call it gratitude, but if you aren't, then maybe once a week reminder or the money date will work for you. So mine for the week, and if you'd like to share, I'd love to know, 
So mine for the week is, so Yuri's birthday was last Thursday, and so we spent a weekend, actually it was just really a day, a full day um, uh, up um, in Napa Valley. We live really close, so I can brag about that. So it's only really about an hour and a half drive from our house. And so I, I love going up to Napa for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the most obvious reason, um, I think you, you all can guess, is um, the wine that we get to drink and, tr and you know taste. Uh, but we kind of have our own routine when we go there. Hi, Sveta. Good to have you here. So when we go, there's a particular winery that we usually stop at first because we can get wine. There's a picnic area. It's called Visa Tui, and I'll put it in the links, uh, link in the, in the comments. And then after that, we just, you know, usually go to something that we've already tried or we try uh, stop at a new winery. So this time, it was kind of a, an exploration, and I found an interesting uh, interesting winery called Inglenook. It's um, it's very it, it's. It, I like the setup of the winery, but the most hi Angie, good to have you here. All right, I'll continue my story. So let me see. Lori was in Texas. Oh, you're training. Oh, how's that? Okay, cool. Well, then you know more about insurance than I do, my friend. Why don't you come on um, and do an interview with me next time? How about that? I don't know if you saw, guys, but I'm starting to do more of that bring other people um, just to have more fun discussions. Hi, Angie, good to have you here. So, um, anyway, this, this, this new winery, I'm actually really, um, really much, uh, you know, in, in love with it because of um, the wine tasted fine. I, you know, was kind of pleasantly surprised. And I found this, um, this it, it, they, they refer to it as a cab, um, and they call it a Rubicon, but it was a combination of a cab, I think uh, Merlot. There was three different wines, but it was amazing. So that's kind of my highlight of the week. Um, not exactly quite a financial, but um, we did spend some money on that. But that was Yuri's gift for his birthday, so he's allowed. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yes, for those of you who are hopping on, thanks for being here. Please share this out. I would appreciate it. But also, as I'm continuing the conversation, share your win. Share your, share your success. Share something that's been fantastic for you over the last seven days. Or you can even think back if nothing really interesting happened uh, in the last week. Okay? I'd love to know. Because we need to give ourselves this positive moments in life. Because it could get so busy and so crazy that, um, I don't know. I just, I just keep asking myself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I waking up every day? So there has to be a why. So in order for you to find your why, and there is a connection to your finances, I promise you, right? It just it's it may not be for today's discussion, but if you can find the why, right? And if you can find the positive things, and even in the day that was, uh, you know, that could be crazy or not as good, it just gets easier. So. All right, I want to talk about renter's insurance, okay? Now, this is the kind of coverage I think I can probably count on my fingers for the, for, for the meetings that I had just this week alone with clients who um, don't have this kind of coverage. I don't know why there is this misconception about renter's insurance being something that is it's just nice to have. It's actually a must to have. Now, let me kind of demystify the fact that it's, it's, it, there's lots of different reasons why do you need renter's insurance, okay? We, we'll talk about homeowners later, but today is if you're renting a space, it could be an apartment, it could be a, a house, a townhouse, anything, if you're renting, even this office, right? So this office, obviously, I, don't, does, I, I have to uh, pay my rent every month, and I got a rent increase. Um, I guess that's my money win. Um, things must be well for my landlord. <laughs> um, I still have to, it's not a renter's insurance, but I have to have an insurance policy that, that, make, you know, that provides coverage in case something were to, ha to happen to one of my clients right on premises. So the same thing, when you are, hi mom, good to have you. This is exciting. Don't have my mom on my videos too often. Mwah. Good to have you. Um, so when you're renting space, you have to remember the landlord, granted it's a big apartment complex or it's a, you know, uh, somebody who owns a house or a townhouse or a condo, they are not responsible for what is going to take place when they turn over the lease or rent to you. So 
you are responsible for anything that takes place inside of that space. So that's number one. That has to do with the liability protection, right? And we'll talk about that. Number two, what about your personal things? What about your possessions? What about your furniture? What about your clothing? What about all the things that you own? If there is a damage that's gonna take place to your own personal items and landlord has advised for you to get, a, to get a renter's policy that will provide that kind of protection, and you didn't, well, guess what? You're not gonna get covered. So renter's insurance policy has a couple of different purposes, right? We need to have coverage because you might be held liable for something that takes, you know, some kind of event that takes place that's not really pleasant. So let's say you have a party and somebody trips and falls and gets hurt. Or another example that um, actually happened to one of my clients, Lori, you have dogs, right? Or you have a dog, you have one dog. So um, a dog of my clients and they were renting an apartment um, actually um, bit somebody, right? And it was a pretty bad situation. So guess what? That person filed, um, you know, filed for complaint, and um, the actual. So they they filed a complaint with the landlord, and then the landlord said, "Well, you know what? That's not my responsibility." So they um, they actually turned over to the tenant, right, of that apartment, and so the tenant had to compensate that person who got bitten because they had to go to the emergency re emergency room, and there was you know there was d some kind of unnecessary expenses. So guess what paid for that kind of policy? The renter's policy. Granted, you know, my client had that kind of coverage. So think about those kinds of things. So if you have pets, particularly dogs, that would be advisable. Now, the other reason if, let's say you had a party and somebody, you know, maybe trip, tripped and fell and got hurt. It's not just um, medical expenses that you get, you get to reimburse. It's other things too. And, and what you want to prevent is you having to pay for it. Renters Insurance and Laurie, I don't know if uh, Liberty Mutual, I think Liberty Mutual does offer. Hi Taylor, good to have you here. I think, I'm pretty sure Liberty Mutual offers uh, renters insurance. Um, yeah, so, so it's, obviously it's, it's, it's for property protection um, as well. So, um, oh, your comments coming in so quick. Uh, yes, so you need to make sure that for something like 15 to $20 a month, you get enough protection so that if those events take place, it's not gonna come out of your pocket, okay? So, so that's one piece, the liability. And how do you determine how much liability you need? I mean, at least start with something like 100,000. I don't think you can even go lower than that. I have not, I have to think, I have not seen policies that are lower than 100,000, okay? Now, if you obviously, right, and this is kind of an individual case, but if you obviously have more assets to protect, well, guess what? That liability uh, portion needs to go up. Hi, Jennifer. Oh my gosh, you guys are all here tonight. Good to have you. So excited, okay? So look at what you're protecting and you're protecting your assets, okay? Now, also sometimes, and I mean, I can't think of, I've not heard and had clients, and I have a couple of my uh, planner friends here. Jennifer, um, you could probably comment on, Angie, Taylor. I don't know if you had clients who had like an extreme examples of, um, you know, lawsuits filed against, uh, you know, somebody who was renting an apartment or something like that. So I, you know, I can't think of something like that, but we can talk about, it. we talked about umbrella insurance last week. So this is where you can configure, right? If you have substantial assets to protect, you can configure your renter's insurance in umbrella and that could provide you an additional protection. So um, think about that. Now, the other piece of the renter's insurance that I think most of us underestimate is the actual property coverage, okay? Now, if you think about, and, and I think the, 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 the misunderstanding that we have is that our possessions, whatever it is, our, our clothing, our, our furniture, computers, these things don't um, don't worth as much as we think they actually are. But think about this, and I have a good example from the recent situation. So up in Sonoma County, you guys probably heard this, this, I mean, gosh, maybe four months ago, we had wildfires, right? And so there were a lot of homes that just, just burned to the ground. They're gone, right? So people who came home, actually, I met a couple, I was flying back from the East Coast, Last time, yeah, last time, last month, 
they were sitting next to me on the plane. And they're like, well, are you going? They asked me a question if I was going home. I said, yes, I was flying from Baltimore to San Francisco. And they're like, well, we're going home too, but unfortunately we have no home. So imagine the situation, because their home burned down in that wildfire. So imagine the situation when you come home and there's nothing there. So not only it is very difficult, right, to fight with an insurance company and say, okay, here's all the things that I actually had, but if you had no coverage, how are you gonna how are you gonna make yourself whole, right? So I mean, I think it's just the whole other side. So why don't why don't you think about you know just assessing and say, all right, if I if all of the things that I have and I own, what would it take to replace it, right? Now I know that, and this is actually I was reading a book. Um, it's called I think it's called the the essentialism, and the, the author makes a pretty good point that. We place, um, sometimes we place a lot more value on things that we already have, even though like, you know how sometimes you have a dress in your closet and you like, I don't know, paid a fortune for it or a pair of shoes, but in reality, it's actually, it doesn't worth as much. So I want you to not think about that. I want you to think about the fact, can you replace those items, right? If something were bad happen, you know, if the bad situation was gonna happen with that. Um, oh, Heidi, hi, good to have you here. So there's another example. Um, Heidi has her own insurance agency. So uh, a client had a, a, oh, okay, yeah, kitchen fire, okay. And how does, okay, how does the landlord policy pay off? Okay, so yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a good example on that as well. Um, so two things to summarize, right? Um, it's not, it, you need to think about the fact that it's not that that's it's not that expensive, and the reason you're getting an insurance policy that is like that, right, is because you want to protect yourself from any kind of lawsuits that can occur, and then you want to protect your own personal possessions, even though even though you may think that it's not worth re replacing, okay? Because again, if you have to start start from scratch and you come home and there's nothing there. It is a very different situation. I obviously don't wish for anyone to, to find themselves um, like that, but it's, it's, it, it could get ugly. So um, there's lots of different people on the stream. I appreciate you guys hopping on. Share your money wins. Don't forget uh, about that. And if you have additional comments um, about you know, renter's insurance and, and how to go about it, they're different. They're different. It's very easy to get. So either you're the landlord that you're renting from, if it's a big apartment complex, they could probably provide uh, suggestions or reach out to these ladies um, on the call. So we have Liberty Mutual, Heidi, I don't know what uh, companies you represent, but definitely um, good to have that. Um, so uh, don't think that it's something expensive and don't think it's very difficult to get. Now, before I close um, for the evening, I wanted to share a quote with you. And you know, it's, I, I am at a point where um, I couldn't find a quote that uh, by somebody that actually want, uh, wanted to bring the point home. So I made up my own, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become famous so you guys can retweet my quote or whatever. <laughs> Reshare it on, um, on other social media. So here it is, here's my own quote. Hoping that things will take care of themselves is not a good insurance plan, all right? And so if you think that that's gonna get you some, somewhere, it probably will, but at the end of the day, there's only so much risk that we as individuals should, should, should take on our own shoulders. That's why insurance exists, right? And if we understand how to use it as a tool to mitigate that risk, it only should help with your financial plan. I appreciate you guys joining me. Thanks for watching. Please share this out and let me know what questions you have. I'll see you next week and don't forget, to check on your expenses, your savings, and then your uh, income for the week. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.